What's up you guys, it's John John. Today I'm bringing y'all a video on optimizing performance. Now for those of you who don't know what optimizing performance is, it's this awesome little system built into GarageBand that will take the project that you spend so much time working hard and putting all of your passion into and it will destroy your audio quality. Now the reason GarageBand does this is because a lot of DAWs or digital audio workstations, which are things like Reaper, Fruity Loop Studios, Ableton, Logic Pro, all of those things like that, will often just straight up crash as soon as you have made a project that just has too much going on and is wearing your system down. Doesn't happen all the time, but it happens frequently enough that the developers behind GarageBand decided they wanted to try and find a workaround, and unfortunately, it just kind of sucks. What optimizing performance is actually doing is it's taking all of your different audio tracks and compressing them down to allow the app to actually perform better so that it has a smaller chance of crashing. Unfortunately, this does literally, again, destroy the audio quality of your music. So, this tutorial is going to be specifically for finding ways to get around this problem. I can't tell you how many projects I have had where I was spending a significant amount of time not working on the music because I was either waiting for optimizing performance to happen or because I was fixing the damage that it did after it was done optimizing. So jumping right into it, there are several things you can do to try and make optimizing performance happen less often or even not at all. And generally, they're all very easy things to do. The first one, and the one that I think is hardest to manage, is the number of tracks you have on your project. The rule of thumb here is anytime you're doing something that is going to cause your project to become bigger and take up more storage space or have more things going on at once, these are things that can increase the chance of optimizing performance to happen. So one little trick that I like to do in a lot of my more recent projects is whenever I am making my songs, I will actually use two separate projects for my instrumentals and my vocals. This is a trick actually a lot of artists use, especially ones that use multiple different DAWs for their projects. And the basis behind this is that whenever you have one project that's full of all your instrumentals, and then you export that as a WAV file and put it into a separate project where you're gonna put all your vocals into, you're then able to effectively double the number of tracks that you're able to have on your music without completely stressing out GarageBand, which is especially important on a DAW like GarageBand because of the fact that there is a very unfortunately small number of tracks that you can have total on a single project. So to do this trick is actually pretty simple. Basically, once you're done making all your instrumental, then go export that project. I like to export it to Dropbox because I find that that is the easiest place to move my projects to where I can then plug them back into GarageBand later and you will save it as a WAV file. This is because most of the other formats that you can save your file as are going to actually cause you to lose audio quality. So even though it may mean a longer loading time or that you may have to try loading it several times to get it to work properly, this is the way that you're going to get your project out of GarageBand as a single file without losing any quality in your tracks. Once you have it in Dropbox, you're then going to move it back into GarageBand. And when you have it in GarageBand as a single file, you can then go in and plug in all your vocals into that track. And the only real limitation you're going to run into when doing this is that you won't be able to, at that point, edit the instrumental anymore. You would actually have to go back into your original instrumental project, make the changes that you want there, re-export, plug it back in, and then do the process over again. Which sounds really tedious, but really it's not as bad as it sounds. And once you've done it a couple times, you find that you're having that problem less often, in my experience at least. The next thing I wanna talk about is that your plugins can have a really powerful effect on how often GarageBand wants to optimize performance. There are some plugins that I have used that I will not ever use again because all they do is cause optimizing performance to happen. There's not a whole lot to say on this front, but I am going to give you a couple of recommendations on apps that I use on pretty much all of my projects that as long as I've used them have never caused optimizing performance to happen more frequently, even when I have these plugins on every single track. The first one I've talked about before in my how to mix vocals in GarageBand video, and it's called Parametric EQ. It's probably the number one plugin that I use that I would recommend to absolutely anybody. Every single project that I create has this plugin on it. It is just a simple three band parametric EQ with your standard high pass, low pass, high shelf and low shelf filters. And the reason I like it so much is because despite the sheer number of things that you can do with this EQ and how intuitive and responsive the plugin is to use, again, putting this plugin on basically every track that I use in GarageBand never affects 
its ability to perform and never causes optimizing performance to happen more often. For compression, this is another plugin that I've mentioned before and it's called Channel Strip. This is actually the only compression plugin that I've ever used on GarageBand, but I found it to be so intuitive, so easy to learn, so good at what it does, and so good at not causing optimizing performance to happen that I just never even looked for another one. I highly recommend you check it out. You can get both of those apps on the iTunes App Store, so they're really easy to find. The next one I want to talk about is a vocal effects plugin called Voice Racks Effect. This is a fantastic plugin to use for instrumentals and vocals alike because it has everything. It can widen your vocals, it can auto-tune your vocals, it has beautiful reverbs, it has a ton of different kinds of echoes, it has a bunch of effects that I had never even heard before prior to using this app, and it even has a vocal transformer, which is absolutely my favorite effect to put on any vocal ever. The last one I wanna talk about real quick before I move on to the next bit is Xeon, and this is a synth app. Now, because GarageBand is absolutely terrible at having good synthesizers, this is the type of plugin that I have looked for the most on the App Store, and Xeon is by far my favorite. It's actually the newest one I got, so it's the one I have used the least, but as far as the wide range of sounds that I have available to you, the ease of use of the app, and the just absolute control you have, over the sound design. This is probably my favorite synth app on the market. Some close runner ups are Magellan 2 and DRC. Magellan 2 is very much like Xeon, but it actually gives you a bit more control over the sound design, whereas DRC doesn't give you as much control over the sound design and it doesn't really have the best sounds available. But if you know what you wanna make, you know how to make it, and you need something that's not going to cause optimizing performance, it's probably the better of the three. However, all three of those plugins are very good about being multifunctional and about being able to be plugged into GarageBand several times over without causing everything to just explode. Moving on to the last part of this tutorial, the storage space on your phone actually plays a very big part in how often GarageBand optimizes performance. Essentially, you're not just thinking about the app's performance, but your phone's performance. Anything that can cause your phone to heat up or slow down are things that are going to cause GarageBand to slow down and therefore things that are going to cause GarageBand to optimize. So, things like your storage space, which can just completely bog down an iPhone's ability to function, are things that you wanna keep an eye out for. Making sure you don't have all your apps open all the time, which I'm really bad at doing, and also making sure that you're not always peaking the storage space on your phone. These are two very good things to keep track of if you wanna minimize the opportunities for GarageBand to optimize performance. And the last, last thing that can cause GarageBand to optimize performance more often, annoyingly, is how often you're opening and closing different projects, especially if you're opening and closing different projects over and over. For some reason, this causes GarageBand to just throw a fit and optimize performance more often. So I found whenever I'm going to start a new song, I try to do it during a time where I know I have a lot of time available to try and get as much done as possible in the first sitting, because that first session is the most important one. It's the one where you have the least chance to optimize performance. And then after that, it's kind of hit and miss, depending on how well you're following the other guidelines I gave you. That being said, I personally don't see optimizing performance that often. The last time I had a big problem with optimizing performance was when I released my most recent song that you should totally go check out because it's awesome. But when I was recording that song, right around the time I was getting finished, it was like every single edit I would make, I would be sitting and waiting for optimized performance for five minutes. And then after it was done, I was having to go in and fix whatever it broke. So since then, I have not really had any problems with optimizing performance because I've cultivated and have been following these different steps that I've now explained to you. And hopefully if you've been having problems with optimizing performance, you won't know. I think that would be great for everybody. And that's it for this video. As always, please like and subscribe if you learned anything or if you enjoyed the content. I am coming out with weekly videos from here on. I tend to cycle between doing covers and tutorial videos, so it should be about in the next two to three weeks I'll have another tutorial if you're on the lookout for that. Otherwise, stay safe, stay healthy, and peace out.